Hi and welcome. <laughs> right, my name. Okay. <laughs> Hi and welcome. My name is Alex and my name is Alina and we both work uh, at Live Green. And we are extremely happy to have you here, whether you're watching this live or in the recording. And uh, this project is called Festival Sustainability Lab. And the lab that Light Green is doing is called Masterclass in Sustainable Events and Sustainability. And that's what we're going to release materials and talk about over the next uh, half a year or so. And most of the materials and the things that we're going to create are just up for grabs. So just come by yourself with your team, with your organization, whoever, and just use everything we create. Watch the films, do the exercises, uh, look through our links and additional resources. Just use it to make yourself more confident in the topic of sustainability. We also organize online workshops uh, where we want you to meet other colleagues in uh, the industry in Europe and to exchange both challenges and success stories, help each other problem solve, network and uh, yeah, become even more sharp in sustainability and take action as soon as possible. If you have any questions at all or feedback, we would love to know. Please talk to us. Uh, you can leave a comment. If you're watching this live, we will try to answer you live. Uh, if not, we'll leave our email address at the bottom or the info section. And uh, you can also email us. Uh, that's what I already said. Yes. Or comment on this video. Thank you so, so much for taking your time. Thank you for educating yourself. Thank you for interest in our masterclass. We really believe that we need more people like you. That's why we're doing this. So really appreciate your attention and your effort. Yeah, I think that's it. Hope you enjoy our little film that's not so little. And uh, yeah. Yeah, good luck and Merry Christmas. <laughs>
and said to myself, Louise, never again. You need to stop putting yourself in this situation. And then a few hours later, when I met with an excited audience, fantastic music and see all the visions come true, I immediately start planning for how much better the festival will be next year. It's very hard to step away from this world once you've been a part of it. In all times, we have invented reasons to unite around common passions, traditions and visions. In all times, culture, whether it's about music, dance, food or games, has united and inspired us. In all times, these meeting places, the festivals and events have reflected our society, but also affected our society. And now, it's inevitable for you, for me, and for the rest of the industry to enter the future without adapting to and taking responsibility for the sustainable transformation that our society is facing. hottest years ever measured, they've all occurred in the last 14 years. And the hottest of all was 2005. Scientific consensus is that we are causing... It's so fucked up. And we let it happen. Used to be the next president of the United States of yeah. This is Patagonia. At least we're talking about it. The same glacier yeah. today. This is Mount Kilimanjaro. 30 years ago and last year. I remember so clearly how it all started for me. A seemingly ordinary day in the classroom in 2010 that would come to change my life forever. Our geography teacher had decided that on this particular day, it's time for the kids to learn the inconvenient truth about global warming. I suffered from severe climate anxiety and became afraid for the world. And it's no wonder that so many young people, and adults for that matter, are afraid for the world. We have a climate crisis, a pandemic, inequality, starvation, human rights restrictions, and we have people in power who deny that these problems even exist. So, what can you do if you become afraid for the world? Well, you can change your lifestyle, support or get involved in a non-profit organization, be politically active, or you can create something that unites and inspires people. For example, a festival. It's a special driven festival for you slit the whole year with planning something that is over for two days. Here there up, here it's very calm. Here up again, chaos. I'm glad of häftig show, <laughs> där vi använder då material, sånt som skulle kastas. Tar vi och jag om till något nytt. Jag gjorde ett VR-spel tillsammans med tre andra som heter Green Reality. Till den här coola grejen. <laughs> För mig som DJ så har det här betytt otroligt mycket. Här finns ett syfte och en anledning till varför den här festivalen finns. En festival som förenar människor, som inspirerar människor och som som lyfter det som är viktigt. En awesome stadsfest. Och alla säger aldrig mer. Och sen andas alla. Och sen säger alla nästa år, då. This, my friends, is how my journey began. From being afraid for the world to trying to save it. Live Green has been a pioneer in the festival industry since 2011. We have used our festival as an arena to empower people, experiment with both ecological and social sustainability, minimize our negative footprint and maximize our positive impact. It's been 10 years of experimentation, innovation, awesome ideas, less awesome ideas, straight up failures, and lots of lessons learned.
That's why we're now starting this masterclass, because we want to democratize the knowledge of sustainability so that festivals and events can become part of the change the world needs. But first and foremost, let's dive a little deeper into the subject of sustainable development. Greetings and welcome to our office. This is where the magic happens. My name is Alexandra, or Alex, and I will be telling you about all of the facts and fun stuff that we researched in this office. So obviously everyone here loves events, or just like concerts and music and theater and dance, I, I, everything. Uh, obviously we're here because we love it and we want it to exist in the future, please. And that's where we started too. We wanted to make a festival. But to hold an event, we need to plan the event. And this is where we do that. So this is our office and this is where we do most of our work. This is behind the scenes. This is where we do our research. This is where we drink our coffee. This is where we fart and blame the dog. This is where my dog lives. <laughs> this is where we complain about the world. This is where we sit quietly and stare into our screens. In this office, I will present the results of our research that we made in this office. So we're gonna spend a lot of time here together. So you're gonna come back here once in a while during this class and we're gonna try to teach you what we found. So get comfortable with my voice and my face because we're gonna spend a lot of time here. You're gonna watch some other stuff too, but my face is gonna be here a bit and my voice is gonna be here a lot. But yeah, let's, let's go. Let's jump into it. Okay. Let's get started. Sustainable development, where do we even begin? It's a super complex topic. The concept was introduced in the Brutlands report with the definition, development that meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In other words, sustainability means enough for all forever. And we got a long way to go. Okay, kids, it's time for a little history lesson. Throughout history, there's been conflicts and debate around our natural resources, how they should be used, gathered, and protected from exploitation and by whom. The Industrial Revolution was brought on by fancy new machines, which allowed us to make way more products cheaper and faster. This meant we needed way more resources. Luckily, our fancy new machines meant we could extract them way faster as well. We powered these machines with our forests, oil and our coal. This led to extreme pollution and emissions of greenhouse gases. And the amount of resources required led to more exploitation and more pollution. During the 60s and 70s, scientists observed the consequences of our new industrialized society. They found proof of how our pollution affected our planet. These findings, combined with the increase of natural disasters at the time, led to more criticism towards our industrial world. This criticism became the foundation for today's environmental movement. Protests, activism and new scientific discoveries paved the way for some great achievements. Laws were written and changed to protect our resources. Several influential environmental organizations were established. Some examples are World Wildlife Fund, Environmental Defense Fund, Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth, and many, many more. Green political parties emerged all over the world, and Earth Day was established by activists to raise awareness. All of this led to the founding of international institutes for the purpose of managing ecological and social crises on a global level. The first UN conference that made the environment the major issue was held in 1972 in Sweden. I didn't plan it, I didn't put it there, it just it's there and I'm just gonna take credit. Representatives from 113 countries agreed that the health of our planet was just as important for humankind as peace and prosperity. The concept of sustainable development was first introduced nine years later by environmentalist, analyst, author and activist Lester Brown. If you have the time, look him up, he is really cool. He even has a velvet bow tie, I mean, come on. 
The term had its breakthrough when it was defined, as we mentioned earlier, in the Brundtland report, Our Common Future. It concluded that social development and economic growth are impossible to achieve if the planet's resources are overexploited. Development and growth must be consistent with nature's limitations, not the other way around. Many sustainability conferences and summits have taken place since. And the environment is talked about more and more, not only on a global level, but also in local politics. Let's jump ahead to year 2006. The former American Vice President Al Gore releases the documentary An Inconvenient Truth. This was a wake-up call for a lot of us. As a result, climate change was thrown into the spotlight. This earned him and the IPCC the Nobel Peace Prize for educating the masses and laying the foundations for how to stop climate change. Brava. I thank thee very much. Just by the way, IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Basically, there are a bunch of super cool scientists from all over the world gathering a bunch of data and telling us what is going on. They make a report and say, here you go. This is what's going on right now. Do with it as you please. <laughs> and we usually do nothing. In 2015, 194 countries signed the Paris Agreement. This was a huge deal. They all pledged to prevent the global average temperature from increasing more than 2 degrees Celsius. And ideally not more than 1.5 degrees. Why these numbers, you ask? Well, scientists believe that if we cross this line, there is no going back. The planet will be changed forever. The global goals were introduced. They look like this and this and, and this. They're basically a guide for how to prevent the global temperature from rising. And we're gonna bring them up a lot because they are great. They are a tool to help us understand what a sustainable future would look like and how to achieve it. And as our last stop, we return to Sweden. Because in August 2018, a 16-year-old girl skipped school to take a seat outside the Swedish parliament. Beside her is a sign that says Skolstrejk för klimatet. School strike for the climate. In the three weeks leading up to the Swedish election and every Friday after, she sat outside the Swedish parliament every school day, demanding urgent action on the climate crisis. Greta Thunberg inspired young people all across the world to join her school strike. They call themselves Fridays for Future. They are the biggest movement for climate justice in modern history. Generation Z, meaning the leaders of tomorrow, have a clear message. There is no alternative but to create a sustainable society. And if we are to succeed, we need a massive system change. In 2020, the whole world ended up in a global crisis when the corona pandemic struck. Our industry, culture and events, was the one to first be forced into lockdown, followed by more than a year of basically being banned from doing our business, but also an explosion of digital innovation and new forms of events and experiences. So, what have we learned from this? Well, one, Solidarity, cooperation and innovation are born out of crisis. Two, we humans can adapt very quickly when we don't have a choice. And three, world leaders can actually make big changes and actions when it's needed. Sustainable development can be divided into three categories. Ecological, social and economic sustainability. There are several theories and approaches to this complex topic. In this masterclass, we will primarily be using an approach based on research by the Blekinge Institute of Technology here in Sweden. This approach defines sustainability by first of all, giving a clear definition of what is not sustainable. In other words, to understand what is sustainable and what we should do, we need to first understand what it is that we are doing right now and that is not sustainable. 
just bear with me, we're getting there. Let me put it like this. Ecological sustainability means avoiding systematic destruction. As in, do not destroy the environment. And here's how. By not systematically increasing the extraction of resources from the bedrock, such as coal, oil and uranium. By not systematically increasing the concentration of man-made substances, such as plastic, but also natural substances such as methane gas. There's just way more of it than there should be because of our huge meat industry. Oops, our bad. And by not systematically increasing destruction of nature by physical means, such as overfishing or deforestation. If you're not doing any of these things, good job, way to go. Yay, you're doing great. But oh no, we are not done. Social sustainability entails not creating structural barriers for people's health, influence, competence, impartiality, and purpose. Simply put, people should never be discriminated against or harmed. Everyone should be able to live a meaningful life with their needs fulfilled. And economical sustainability. In this masterclass, we'll be focusing on the concept economical sustainability as in sustainable for the planet and the people on it. So in our context, economy is mostly a tool to achieve ecological and social sustainability. And economic growth should not affect either negatively. I mean, I know it's a big ask, but it is possible and definitely worth striving towards. There's another way to define sustainable development through these. The United Nations 17 Global Goals. With the ambition to create a visual language for a sustainable future, these goals have had an international impact and are used by everything from companies and schools to governments and NGOs. A big reason why the global goals have become so popular is the beautiful, colorful and clear design, which is actually created by Swedish designer Jakob Tolbeck. We can be. We must be. The first generation to end extreme poverty. The generation most determined to fight injustice and inequalities. The generation that saves the planet from climate change. And this is how it will get done. The Global Goals. A 15-year plan for everyone, everywhere, with no one left behind. We, we will live in a world where nobody anywhere lives in extreme poverty. Where no one goes hungry. Where no one wakes in the morning asking if there will be food today. We will live in a world where no child has a diet. Diseases we know how to cure. And where proper health care is a lifelong right for us all. We will live in a world where everyone goes to school. And education gives us the knowledge and skills for a fulfilling life. We will live in a world where all girls and all women have equal opportunities to thrive and be powerful and safe. We cannot succeed if half the world is held back. We will live in a world where all people can get clean water and proper toilets at home, at school, and at work. We will live in a world where there is sustainable energy for everyone, heat, light, and power for the whole planet without destroying the planet. We will live in a world where economies prosper. A new wealth leads to decent jobs for everyone. And we will live in a world where our industries, our infrastructure, and our best innovations are not just used to make money, but to all make all our lives, lives better. We will live in a world where prejudices and extremes of inequality are defeated inside our countries and between different communities. Where people live in cities and communities that are safe, and progressive, and support, and support everyone, everyone who lives there. there. Where we replace what we consume. Planet where we put back what we take out of the earth. We live in a world that is decisively rolling back the threat of climate, climate change. change. Where we restore and protect the, the life, life in, in our, our oceans, oceans and, and seas. <laughs> we'll restore and protect life on land. The forests, animals, the earth itself. With peace between and inside countries. Where all governments are open. And answer to us for what they do at home and abroad. And the justice rules. With everyone equal before the law. Where all countries and we their people 
work together. In partnerships of all kinds. To make these goals a reality for everyone, everywhere. These are the United Nations global goals for sustainable development. Let's, Let's get, get to work. work. Let's make it happen. Since I work with festivals, I hate being a party killer. I don't want to talk about how everything is going to hell with our planet, but I must be brutally honest with what the situation looks like before we start this masterclass. In the summer of 2021, when this film is shot, Earth Overshoot Day, the day when we have consumed the Earth's resources for this year, took place on July 29. That's almost a month earlier than last year. We have recently had both extreme heat and floods around the world. The carbon dioxide level is record high and if we continue to live as we do today, the global temperature will increase and it'll have consequences that I don't even want to think about because it's so dystopian. Millions of young people continue to strike around the world because our leaders still do not treat climate change as a global crisis. But there is hope. Now, sustainability issues are taken more seriously than ever. We can more easily relate to global crisis situations since we have recently been in one. Extreme weather and the risks of infections and diseases that global warming entails don't feel as remote for us who live in the global north anymore. Also, it's actually today's youth whose future is really threatened. It's not just future generations we need to care about, it's our children who will be adults in 2030, the year that researchers have set as a deadline to reverse the trend. And we see proof of this right before us. Sustainability is not just a trendy word, an identity or a marketing tool anymore. It's starting to become the norm. So the question is, why should we, who work with festivals, culture and events, take the lead? Yutu Singa Bono has said the following. Music can change the world because it can change people. If we want to change the world, we simply have to change people's attitudes and behaviours regarding sustainability. Yeah, and we artists, we have a great opportunity to influence people and make them feel things through our music. And of course, through our Instagram posts. Correct. Music, culture and festivals has a unique position to be at the forefront of this development because we have the attention and trust of the outside world. Through our own responsibility and powerful communication, we can inspire, empower and set the new norm. And speaking of norms and behavior, a study from University of Gothenburg shows that when we people visit festivals and big events, then we are much more open to new impressions and much more likely to change our behavior and attitude. Interesting. Another interesting fact is that festivals are a mirror of society. We build temporary cities and all the challenges that exist in society, from waste production to sexual harassment, also exist at our events. Therefore, we have a unique opportunity to be a test bed for a sustainable future. We can create, try out and develop new methods, innovations and ideas that can then be implemented in the rest of society. My focus is business and creating new opportunities and if sustainability can help, why not? I mean, who wants second place? And one thing that is certain is that our industry would not do well in an unsustainable future. Organizing big events and festivals in extreme weather, no one's looking forward to that. One thing that history and the latest pandemic has shown us is that Culture is always the first thing to be sacrificed in a situation of crisis. Everyone benefits from us taking control of climate change and environmental destruction. Also, 
the more people that thrive, the more can visit, perform at, organize and pay for our events. This masterclass consists of educational videos like, like this format right here, this, this you're watching, educational. A digital platform with additional tools and information we have gathered along the way and interactive workshops with us and other participants who are also taking the course. In this workshop, we discuss what we are learning and we learn from each other and you can ask us questions and we ask you questions and it's a jolly good time. <laughs> I really sound like a vacuum salesman, like, hi, don't you need a new vacuum? Look at all these fancy products. Of course, this video is pre-recorded. So depending on when you're watching this, there may or may not be a workshop coming up at the moment. So make sure to check out up-to-date information on our platform. Take what works for you and just do that. Everything is just up for grabs. We're going to explore four different topics, one per module. So the first module is the most obvious one, ecological sustainability. This is where we at Light Green first got started and probably the main reason you're here. Second is social sustainability. We usually don't think about this area too much, but there's a lot we can do with not a lot of work and it's something we need to talk more about. Third module is communication and impact. How do we communicate with our audience? How do we educate them on topics we think are important? And how do we tell them about our goals and our progress? And fourth is economic sustainability, innovation and the future. Oh. In this capitalist world, we need to talk about money. So let's talk about how we can make money in a sustainable way. We also want to talk about how we can contribute to our society's evolution and where we think the future is going. The modules consist of episodes on different topics within the theme. And of course, since we're from the music industry, we name them after song titles. We'll also be releasing additional bonus episodes with deep dives on topics or ideas we find particularly interesting. There's gonna be a mix of theoretical knowledge, deep dives into the biggest and most complex issues and challenges, inspiring solutions, and interviews with sustainability pioneers, industry leaders, and experts. We've also included some reenactments that are based on our own experiences as festival organizers. We feel they illustrate some common misunderstandings, situations, and generational change our industry is experiencing during its transition into more sustainable practices. We really want to show you all the possibilities and opportunities you have as a content creator or event producer to make a difference and enrich the world and the people in it. So try and think of what we're saying as opportunities and not as obligations. We're all doing our best and every little step counts. Since we at Live Green have worked specifically with a music festival, we have many examples from the festival and cultural industry. But even if you work with sporting events, summits, film screenings or student parties, you will be able to relate to the content and benefit from the knowledge we share in this masterclass. Sustainability is a big topic and we won't have time to go through everything, of course. We have simply made a selection. Therefore, we have also created a platform for you who want to learn more about a specific issue, find more tips and listen to the interviews in full length. We've also created this masterclass together with the industry. We have interviewed festival leaders, activists, sustainability experts, international NGOs, researchers, artists, booking companies and inventors. For that reason, we have chosen to make the content of this masterclass very accessible. But also for the reason that we don't have that much time left to put everything right. And if we are to succeed, we need many who can master sustainability. Now it's time to get started and plan our sustainable festival.